and we are back with another live one for all you Biconics Wrestling nerds out there. And welcome to a very interesting special edition of the Biconic Review of Honor, or the bro for short. So I am Mikey, joined with my other bro co-host, Andrew. And joining us as a special guest commentator this week, you saw him on the Dynamite review the other day, and now he's here once again because he's dipping his toe into Ring of Honor. <laughs> we have the Professor John. John, I'm literally I'm so excited to have you here. This is, this was a fun one to get you involved in. I'm very intrigued. To, so we were talking before we started. I haven't watched Ring of Honor in a while, and I don't think I've watched it in the Tony Khan era. So this was new for me. I remember the Black Arena Ring of Honor, like barely any lights, like Ring of Honor. I have some acting questions. I have a few production questions myself, but overall, it was quite refreshing to watch the Ring of Honor. I might have a new favorite tag team of all time because that was amazing. All of a sudden I was watching, and we'll talk about it when we get there. I was like, I'm just gonna watch this thing. Oh my God, I'm a nine-year-old again. This is fantastic. Oh my God, oh my God. But we'll get there. I have a few, and for those of you that know me, hopefully you watch everything that we have here. I tend to talk acting and storytelling and stuff like that. There's a few folks here who are cardboard, but other than those few folks, there's some pretty good, there's some interesting stuff happening over here at Ring of Honor. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be on the wrong show today. I am so excited. I cannot wait to get you involved. And then of course, me and Andrew are, we got a lot of, we are the Ricky Ricardos of the professors like I love Lucy would be like we got some explaining to do <laughs> oh man if I'm Lucy all hell breaking loose you're the technically you're the redhead of the group <laughs> that's fair this is <laughs> oh, in the winter months this gets brighter red it's crazy can I ask one question at the top though if this because I just have a, a overall ring of honor question because you two have been here longer is there just a thing for like thinly veiled dick jokes is that just a <laughs> thing they do here at ring of honor or is oh, yeah. that something new yeah, you have to remember that it's just only a streaming service show, so they definitely get away with a lot with so much thinner yeah. innuendos than they do on other shows. Okay, that makes a lot of sense, actually, because yeah. the first five minutes I was watching, I was laughing at stuff and giggling like, there's a lot of references oh, yeah. to Huevos here, like, what's yeah. happening? I'm not against it, it's great, but I'm also like, look at all the, there's a lot of, this is, okay, we're going for dick <laughs> stuff, okay, it's all right, yeah, cool. Because like Andrew said, because it's a streaming show, we can get a, they can get away with so much more. I also, well, I mean, you've got your introduction kind of to our commentary team on Dynamite, but you get the full Caprice Coleman and yeah. Ian Riccoboni, and we here, they are the best commentators, period. Oh, yeah. They're amazing. I, They're awesome. I mean, we, I was going to talk about that later on. We can talk about it now. You brought it up. They're great. I was never bored. They got the narrative going every time. They weren't stalling for time. It wasn't, you know, Taz stuttering and then going bah, 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 Brooklyn. Like it just, uh, it was, it flowed really well. It was never clunky. Like they had a reason to speak to things. They didn't get involved, if that makes sense. Like they weren't trying to steer you too much. Oh, they're great. Why are they on Ring of Honor and not the AE and all the other main stage stuff? No, no don't keep them stop on taking Ring away our stuff. <laughs> but it would make my job better on the Dynamite side. The no, two of them we... and Lexi on Ring of Honor. Yeah, Ring of Honor's so got good. the best trio of commentators yeah. and yeah. On I was very, I was, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm very impressed with what they were doing and and, and it, that's the way it should be. Like that's that's how it works when it's clean. Like that's to not not to invoke another promotion, but that's kind of <laughs> when the other promotion gets it right. Instead of that three-headed monster, what are we doing thing that they've been doing for a while? That's great. And, and yep. this is rivals that, if not better, my cat just knocked water all over the other cat. So, I mean, it just happened to me. Impressive, very impressive. I love it. I cannot wait to answer any questions as we go mm -hmm. along. But we open up this week, which we've already said our piece of how we feel about having a proving ground match when we don't have a championship at the moment. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. But I still enjoy this match. So this is a ring of, we open up with a Ring of Honor World Championship Proving Ground match where we see the challenger Evil Uno of the Dark Order taking on our Ring of Honor World Champion, Eddie Kingston. I like this match only because Eddie Kingston, Evil Uno are some of my favorite peoples. I thought it was pretty fun. That I will leave it at that. I, I enjoyed it. Not to cut Andrew off or anything, just jumping in. Did they boo? Evil Uno coming out and then yay him when he got in the ring. I want to see. I feel like it was kind of mixed, but I want to say they were cheering more for him because okay. we were in Evil Uno's hometown. 
that's what I was gonna say. Is they were doing this like boo, and they were trying to show people booing and trying to get yelling, and then you know the the Mad King poster, which we saw ten more times. And they were trying to heal him, but then got into the ring, and everyone went, yeah. I was like, okay, because he's from here. Woo. So it was just a funny moment of like, hey, audience, where are we going? I liked the, this man meat match. I had no problem with it. I thought it was there was really funny about halfway through where Uno thought he was gonna do a chop fest with Eddie and then Eddie went, okay, I'll show you one, hit him one time and you just see the shivers go through Uno and it goes right down to his knee and then you see that big collarbone hamper earlier on. I thought this was fun. There was a little bit of miscommunication I thought in the middle here and there, but I think they were trying to do big spots because hometown stuff. Eddie even cracked a smile at like, okay, hometown guy, all right, cool. And then commentary was saying that they haven't really seen each other before, right? Like this is the first time Ever, maybe? At least in Ring of Honor, because... Ring of Honor, okay. Yeah. I thought it was fun. Yeah, I had no problems with it, yeah. And Andrew was angry. so the kids! Andrew was angry about it? What was I'm I so angry? excited, I, I can't it? wait. Okay. Andrew, what do you... How so, do you I don't want to start this off with how you might say spicy, but... Spicy already? So, alright, so I'm already frustrated with the whole Ring of Honor title, Eddie Kingston, all this sure. stuff. I'm not sure if when this whole tournament is over, we're going to have one title that's combining everything, or if we're just getting somebody else another title so we can have one person tie up three new titles, like three more titles. Like, are we just going to have Eddie Kingston win this, and then he's going to have one other title that he's just going to, like, partially defend and not even be in the company he's wrestling for those titles for? And there's going to be a gauntlet. You got to get the gauntlet, yeah. and then you got to get all four yeah. of the, the things, and then. At, at least when they did this, that whole premise in Lucha Underground, they made it interesting with the Aztec <laughs> warfare and all that. <laughs> That's right. But this is it. I'm just so frustrated with this, and like you said earlier, the fact that we're having a proving ground match. Apparently, the proving ground match is for the Triple Crown, Continental, Multilinguistic, you know, F Triple P championship or whatever the that Rosetta is. Stone. Yeah. So I, I'm just frustrated by this because they did the same thing when he wrestled Lee Johnson, you know, a few weeks back. And also I think it's because I'm seeing so much Eddie Kingston with watching him in the tournaments, watching him. And to be fair, he's been on Ring of Honor more than he has in, you know, recent history. I was going to say, I haven't seen him in a little bit. So he is yeah, the current... In this iteration of Ring of Honor, he has been the main champion for the men's title that has appeared most on Ring of Honor because our previous champion was only on there once in the, what, almost a year a long title reign that he had that title? Still wow. not over it. I'm salty about that. But continue. I, I'm getting less interested in watching the unbeatable Eddie Kingston, and I feel like they kind of painted themselves into this corner with him having these titles that have to go to the end and it feels like it's a given that he's going to be at least in the final match and then when he does these proving ground matches i'm not going to have him lose a proving ground match while he's in the middle of this tournament especially because most champions don't lose the proving ground matches anyways so it's just been kind of frustrating and then at the end of this match it was like four moves before the end i was like oh he's going to hit him with this he's going to go up he's going to miss it and he's going to get up he's going to hit this end of the match and it was it just I just, technically it was a solid match, but I just wasn't invested in it and I really didn't care. Sure. I had the same sort of, oh, someone called it to go home, and then all of a sudden 30 seconds it was over. Like, I, yeah. I agree. It kind of felt like we were going somewhere and we kind of, I don't want to say plateau because that's not what I mean, but it sort of got into a, hey, let's fill time until we go home section. <laughs> that makes sense. I don't, oh, I, all up on the other pro promotion, up on the AEW, Eddie's being cast as the guy who can't win this tournament and now he's down here apparently holding the belts for too long and all these other things i i think it's and and i'm sure mikey will go all out if i poke him too much but if it's tony khan bad booking segment and it's just rolling the floor with where are we going what are we doing how it's, it's good to know that ring of honor has the same sort of we've written ourselves into a corner problems that yeah. we're talking about everywhere <laughs> yeah it's an ongoing issue because it's like ring of honor has such solid staples that could support the stories that could happen here though the actual ring of honor world title story with athena and billy ha is a great example of that sure. but so much stuff has gotten caught up with other promotions and titles not being there and being kind of second thoughts 
that yeah it's it's rough I, that's strange I, yeah. yeah so but i things got I, better i mean andrew's not wrong it it went up from here i <clears> thought this was technically i thought this was a solid match but of course again for those of us that have been watching the tournament that's been going on as well as ring of honor for pretty much since its inception earlier this year yeah the, the main men's title has been kind of all over the place i will say this chapter with eddie kingston as the champion has been better because claudia only appeared once to defend huh? that thing but, the bar you know, was set low yeah so it's not that hard <laughs> but not setting the bar low is our next match where of course one of our personal favorites here at the bro we saw layla hirsch take on local talent katrina creed i love me some legit layla hirsch i love the story that we're telling with her and rachel ellering and maria canellis like layla is awesome i thought this was a fun match of course layla picks up the victory here and uh, furthering the storyline that now she's winning over Maria. So Maria's like, all right, I will work with you now. And now we're going to make greatness. I do indeed love Short Queen. I thought she was great. I looked her up. She's 4'11". And I was like, oh, she's built like a tiny truck. I thought it was a good match, fun. I, I had no issues there. Did you know if you're 4'10", you get a handicap placard? Sorry, not related. My other question with her, though, she's great in the ring. I thought she was a lot of fun to watch. I took a few notes here and there. I tend not to take notes during wrestling matches, not because I'm a creeper, but because they're usually that good. I'm all in on watching the thing. Her promo and selling, she's kind of cardboard. She needs a little work with the promo and the give and take and saying words out loud thing, but everything else is absolutely there. I'm wondering if that's why they paired her up with two very charismatic folks that kind of sell the theatricality of the thing. I don't know. I'm new to be. I'm new here. But she, she was, you know, a force to be reckoned with and was awesome. We just saw later on in the promo when she was talking out loud. I was like, oh, honey, you need just a wee bit of coaching. Not much, but enough to like, hey, take a breath. Hey, use your face. Hey, just calm down a little. But hey, like all the acting stuff that I talk about on, on other promotions. This was a fun match. It was a great introduction to one of your favorites, I guess. Yeah, I thought this match was it was good. It was like it was just enough of a step up from a squash match that so that got a little chuckle from me. I liked that they are continuing to tell this Maria, Layla, Rachel, Ellering story, and that the matches are building into that, which is where I think they really excelled in the Athena Billy Starks match or uh, story. I think being able to tell those stories with promos as well as in the ring action, uh, I thought they did that really well here. The match itself was fine. Like I said, it was pretty much basically a squash match, but I do like I what they're it, doing. Not to cut you off, I, I, it felt like it was gonna be. To me, I was like, oh, they're just gonna squash him. Like there's no chance. But then they kept going and just, Creed got some runtime. Like there was a little bit of respect shown there. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And Creed held her own for them. Creed held her own for that second half, I thought, and had some sales to the audience, had some other stuff. And then all of a sudden it was over. It's like, oh, well, and then that happened. Yeah. No. Yeah. But yeah, to your note, I think that is part of the reason they put Layla Wish with uh, Maria. You know, Maria's proven commodity as a uh, manager for, especially for tag teams, but just individuals. She, excuse me, she can tell that story really well, and I think she can help boost up, I don't want to say like carry, but she can kind of help hold up and boost up some of the performers who are still working on those aspects. But yeah, Layla Hirsch's strengths are definitely in the ring. Uh, oh, yeah. Unintended. There was a few times right in the beginning and then a few other moments where Layla's just looking at her like, why would you do that? What do you think? And then throws her into yeah. something. That's, that's kind of, that's great. I like that. I really, again, I like Layla Hirsch. I agree with Andrew. It does help to be paired up with Maria Canellis, who is someone who can work with the mic and has a better acting. And it also kind of helps too when you pair her up against someone who is kind of on the same level as Maria in a sense with Rachel. Because again, I mean, we, we all know who her father is. And I was just like, that. we know that she's done this. Like, who's dead? Oh, that is Paul, Paul Ellery. Ellery. The authors of pain. Yes, we just hit him with the flashback. <laughs> what? Yeah, Rachel yeah. Ellering is the daughter of Paul what? Ellering. Yeah. Oh my God. I don't know if I should go down this rabbit hole right now. <laughs> no way. Yeah. I mean, we are going to constantly blow your mind. What? That's fantastic. I'm nine I'm nine years old again. Like, oh my God. That's okay. Not Sorry. Don't mean to derail anything. <laughs> Carry on. 
That's crazy. I love, oh, speaking of things that were great, though, we get our first <laughs> multiple tag team backstage promos, and the first one up is our boys of the Outrunners. I love them so much. Okay, I, I, I'm not saying I checked out, but I was definitely just sort of on autopilot up until this promo. Like, yeah, cool. Okay, Ring of Honor's pretty, all right, Ring of Honor's on stuff that I know. And then this thing hits and I'm like, what is happening? This sort of like, this Hulk Hogan from Kmart guy, this sort of mid nineties generic wrestler over the top guy in like old school, let's just give me something with color neon. Dude has the Hogan haircut and everything. Oh my God. Dude, the, the Midnight Express meets the fabulous Freebirds meets like the mega powers they're no. just yeah it's it's of that lineage and it was i i don't want to overuse a word but it was just refreshing to be like oh hey there it is like and and they know exactly what they are and what they're doing the match they had later reflected it they weren't yeah. trying to hide nothing and it, it's not even goofy wrestling for life it's if you're gonna be big be big and and oh, I, i'm i'm at a loss for words it was it's just fun it was super you, fun to watch them. you need to find a chance to go back and watch a couple other more recent just tag team matches and see how good they actually are because they do the comedic stuff really well but they do the wrestling stuff well too and it fits together perfectly it's great like they were good in the tag match tonight but when you get to see them actually just like focus on them it's yeah I, i'm excited too like that's enough to bring me back to ring of honor to be like what are they there? oh they're there okay great and 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 your your views on tag team wrestling andrew have sort of permeated all the shows here where it's like yeah no one respects it as an art like they should and i was just happy to see a group like that a few others in that six man tag we talk about but to see them and do it the way they're doing it and obviously so the the skills that was that made me much happy mm, that was great with andrew being our resident tag team expert we talk about this all the time and ring of honor has probably some of the funnest tag team division right now in terms of men's tag team sure the problem sure. is, is is that main roster of aew keeps snatching a bunch of them up to be and the titles and the titles to be, and i was like we have all these amazing tag teams and the tag team titles are being held hostage by mjf but that we've already spoken to nauseam with that but i love the outrunners we're gonna see them in action next and i got what i asked for because next up in a beer championship proving ground match the challenger jason geiger taking on wheeler yuda i'm like finally we get to Thank see you. wheeler wrestle in ring of honor since low bolt blowing shibata to get the title off of him on rampage i think he won it on rampage yeah, he yeah. Won. that match was still fun so can't believe just, it. paul ellering sorry i got what i wanted wheeler yuda to wrestle at some point before final battle i got it this was fun and i love Again, the Pure Championship is so different than a lot of other championships out there in multiple companies. It's one of my personal favorites. I still I still say Wheeler Yuta has the best copyright-free guitar riff entrance of all of them. I still really like it. I know JBL hates it, but I'm like, no, this is the only one that sounds like a legit boss battle to me. I, I, I like Wheeler Yuta. I haven't seen Wheeler Yuta in a while. I know I was away for a while. And then on the Dynamite, I have not seen Wheeler Yuta taking up space behind John Moxley, which is a shame. I miss you, Wheeler. Sorry. I love watching Wheeler Yuta. I thought that, that standing uh, death lock, I wrote this down, death lock? Standing death lock, whatever that thing was. I've never really seen it done quite like that. That was just a bully. Like, oh, that's just mean. I'm just gonna stand here while you're oh playing. yeah <laughs> i thought that was kind of fun who's geiger is geiger just a jobber or he's just a local talent from the area guy? not terrible like solid dude they made they built him up some they gave him some ring time and talked about him on commentary too he he knew his stuff so i was kind of like hey dude right <laughs> Get, One thing get, about this iteration of Ring of Honor that we really appreciate and we talk about all the time is that when they do get local talent to kind of be a part of these matches, mm -hmm. they're not just squash matches as we have come to sure. in here. Squatch. They, like, they actually let them shine. Yeah. And sometimes they end up being some of our favorite matches of the evening. And I was like, who's this local talent? All right, let me look them up and start following them on social media real quick. And what was great about these commentators, whose names I'm going to keep forgetting. What are Caprice their names? Caprice Coleman and Ian Riccoboni. So Caprice As and Ian. They were actually calling out some of the BJJ moves and things that were happening during that moment. 
unlike Taz, who just says like Japanese gibberish and pretends that we're not noticing. It's like, come on, Taz. Yeah, that's a leg bar. He's grabbing his arm, Taz. What are you doing? You're not even trying. I thought this was fun. I'm a Wheeler Yuta, Yuta guy. I had a question about the formatting of this match and kind of how it's, you know, this, don't do that. Ropes in this thing, da da da. And now there's judges and they're gonna judge you because but there's rules. And I because maybe I just missed that. The judges are there because there's a time limit. So if it goes to the time limit, the judges decide who won the match. Kind mm -hmm. of like MMA style, boxing, boxing style. And the rules are to make it pure <laughs> wrestling style. So it's more about the grappling I see. and the striking that is seen as like, okay. you know, which is why in a lot of promotions you get the like, you know, don't punch him with the closed fist sure. that ties into the old rules. Right, yeah. Which. I really like that we've seen this with Shibata, we've seen it with okay. Willa Yuta, where they know how to manipulate those rules, you know, whether it's I'm, like this. Yeah. I love the fact that Yuta forced uh, Geiger to take up his uh, rope breaks so he could then yes. finish it with, and I was saying this a few weeks ago, someone using something like a tarantula or whatever, but he and used that, behold. like, that, you know, that tied up uh, guillotine that he put him out with. But I like that he used that, you know, they'll use like closed fists when it's a really important like you know opportune time to use it you know i like seeing wheeler yuda in this position because i think he's a good option for the pure division he you know he's built up with the uh, blackpool combat club to be you know kind of that second or third tier title like mm -hmm. you know for ring of honor and i think it's a good place for him because he kind of is that extra little brother figure for Blackpool cool Combat Club. You know, we've got the three the three main guys who we really think of when we think of Blackpool Combat Club and then Wheeler Yuta. Which I, I like that he's a part of it and he works well with them, but he over just he just gets overshadowed by the other members. So I like that he has this other thing that he goes to do that's like his specialty. But it also ties in because it's like he gets to use all the stuff he's learned from his like big brothers. Sure. You know, and it's just you're right, and it sucks that up on Dynamite when you, we see Wheeler Yuta, it's just in this third wheel capacity, and it drives me nuts. And I've ta I've run my mouth about that plenty of times. So really, you let's cut this promo, and it's just Wheeler in the back, like hi, I'm here, like it has nothing to do, and that's rough. But I, I Wheeler's really good and super talented. I just I wonder if they just don't know where to use him or what to do or. I think he's just, its he's a small fish in a big pond compared to there. He's, That's rough. He can be a bigger fish. And and I think it just, it fits for him and it fits for his style. Yeah. I think he plays a really good kind of heelish figure for the peer division, which the performers there tend to have different characteristics. Like they just are a little like colder. If, I don't know if that's sure. like, you know, they're a little more like, I mean, yeah. you know, but uh, <laughs> I think it works well for him. And, you know, I think it also could give us a good build up to like Wheeler Universe and Josh Woods and things like that. So I thought this was a good match. Again, I thought, you know, our this was our third match. So I thought each of them was kind of picking up as we were going forward. Sure. Uh, and I love that on top of getting to see a ton of tag team action this week on Ring of Honor that we also got to see several things that at least tied in to championships in Ring of Honor, if not actual championship matches. So, you know, I was happy to see all that kind of stuff because it's actually feeling like its own promotion now. Right. It was so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, this match made me happy. I love seeing the your championship back now. Speaking of things that make me happy, <laughs> I don't care what nobody Lipping says. Sauce. Sipping sauce, the big hosses, like in the six man tag. <laughs> what? Let me prep. Let me give this preference. So, this had two of the best things, and this is why yes. I'm mad that both Jesse and JBL are not here for this episode because those boys would literally have just made some pie with this, you know, if you catch the innuendo with a certain C word. Try not to get demonetized, but we had a six man tag between. The Iron Savages and their, their buddy Jack Davison taking on Dalton Castle and the boys. This is the most homoerotic thing that I saw on my television screen so this week good. on Ring of Honor. <laughs> but <laughs> missed it more. She gave me a complex. I was sitting here watching going, I'm seeing what I'm seeing, right? I'm seeing what I'm Because I'm coming from Dynamite and, and other promotions where it's like, we are squeaky clean. And then watching this like, oh my God, am I? Is, this is real, right? I'm not inferring any of these things that are just coming at me. Dalton's, Dalton coming down. I wrote this down. Where'd it go? 
Are you? I doubt it. I'm bottomless, baby. Yes. You could eat me all day. Says that yeah. with a straight face to the camera. I'm like, wait, what did you just say? And then later on, halfway in this match, was like, bring me a boy. He uses, I love when he uses the boys, but not to mention oh. Iron Savages and Jack Jameson oh always God. say some sort of horrible innuendo that Caprice <sighs> and Ian are like, they ha they are in the gimmick, and I love it. I was just they like, had a really what good. I thought you did. I, I'd have to rewatch it. They had a really good one about uh, their junk, and I missed it. And I heard it as, as the camera was coming by, and I was like, "Wait, did you just say, oh, what?" This, See, yeah, the sauce, the thing, sauce is thing is the sauce thing is dirty and gross. I kind of love it so much with that. They had Dalton a boob. Castle drinking the sauce <laughs> all over his mouth. He said something. Someone said something about it, like, "Oh, it's on his chin." It's like, "Oh God, no, no!" Again, we're on streaming, so we can get away with so much more. This is your so standard tag team match, but Lord have mercy, this was the best character work I have seen in Ring of Honor tag. That was so much. Well, fun. it's always fun with the tag team division. They got so many good characters in terms of tag team six bands like factions. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care if the wrestling was your standard paint by numbers. Dalton and the boys and then the Iron Savages and Jack Jameson made this so much better. And I was just I like, I don't yes. think there was anything that was paint by numbers at all. I think it was just friggin' mad. I looked up Dalton Castle because I did not. I'd heard the name, but I didn't know who he was. First Dude. thing that comes up, theater degree. I was like, yes, of course yep. you're one of us. I know exactly what you are. Peacock man, great. It's one of the best things about so, Ring of Honor right now. I've never, and I'm I'm brand new to this world you live in. Like that guy who's great. And then I, you guys have to answer who who's he had who's the dude who had three of them and did the back body anyway. Oh, Boulder. Boulder. Right? Oh no, yeah, Beefcake Boulder, yeah. Beefcake, much impressive, massive man meat on this show. Like quite. Quite the man meat in this in this match. I loved it. That was so much fun. I well, like trio stuff. Are we are we yeah. happy with trios? Are we man on trios? Ring of Honor okay. does some really good trio six man like all the time. Again, now you know. I wish I just wish I saw more. I don't see it on yeah. the dynamite anymore, which is shitty because you know. Just now, crazy because between Ring yeah. of Honor and AEW, we have two trios type titles we will say wow. ring of honor does more with trios yep. but we have complained because our current six-man tag champions have been split in the terms of like gates of agony were in japan but now they're coming back so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be fine and brian cage has, has at least been on television for ring of honor for over the last couple of weeks so we're still we'll, there we'll talk about brian brian we love Brian are, Cage. Are here. you full? I doubt it. I'm bottomless, baby. You could eat me all day. Man, Dal live rent Dalton free Castle in your head. just that's so from the way that this match picked up once Dalton Castle came in. Like when he hit yeah. that German, that stalling German on uh, Beefcake Boulder, insane. Like Dalton is just <clears throat> such a powerhouse. What's I funny? Thought... He... Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, you're good. I was just gonna say I thought the end to this was the right choice because I thought Dalton Castle going into that uh, six-man match for the TV title needed to have a win. This is a former trios champion team, or six-man tag team, and it was the odd man out kind of for the Iron Savages, the one that doesn't wrestle the most. So I, I thought this was a good call. I really enjoyed it. The boys are so freaking entertaining too. Like. The way, they, the way they're squealing and chirping while they're getting oh, yeah. picked up and tossed. It's like, what are you doing? This is great. Do you ever remember, do you remember the video game Overlord where you controlled the little gremlin characters? Oh, yeah. Oh my God. The, the sounds that the boys make are like the sounds that the uh, minions in that make. It's the same exact sounds, and it's so good. good. It's so entertaining, though. Uh, that speaks to the demographic. If you get that reference, please subscribe to my card. Listen, this is this is what people are here for. They come for the wrestling. They stay for the pop culture references. But See, it, Dalton yeah, Castle also has it. one of those physiques where I think Vince Vaughn used to talk about this, where you're in shape and out of shape at the same time. <laughs> like, you're not in excellent shape, but... You're not yoked and like cut either. So him calling out TV guy, whatever his name was, we'll talk about him later. Oh yeah, so Johnny like, TV. Oh, we can we just talk, look at we me. Just talk about just, it now because as soon just, as the match is over, Johnny TV, <laughs> listen, Johnny TV and Dalton Castle is the rivalry that I've wanted so long. And it's only took one little interaction between oh, these two. Man. Was it last week or the week before? Last, last week, I was just like, I'm already sold. We're also going to talk about 
the other half of Johnny mm -hmm. TV, who mm -hmm. I also been wanting to see more of, and Lord have mercy, she won me over in her match. Oh, yeah. But before we get to that, Dalton Castle and the boys pick up the victory, Giant TV comes out, it's great. We get our second tag team backstage with what look to be extras from Motley Crew. Uh, the Butcher and the Blade. Yo, that mustache, though, I gotta say, that mustache game is on point. Like, Yo. Lord have mercy, it's like, walrus. I love that we have them in this division. <laughs> right? It, and they're getting used. It's like they're not gonna get overlooked in Ring of Honor. They're actually gonna be one of the main, like, powerhouse tag teams in the division, which is great. I mean, seeing them against the Righteous for a tag title would be amazing. You know, we've already seen them against the Iron Savages, but I'd love to see it again. But watching these promos, I was like, yes, build this division, bring those titles back, and let's actually have a division go because these are some awesome tag teams. Yeah, I, I thought all of the promos hit this one too. There was only one that I was sort of meh, and we could talk about that when we get there. It. I, Ring of Honor seems to have figured out that in a sense, where it's like, we are building towards a thing, and mm -hmm. these aren't clunky promos, these aren't improvised in the sense of, oh, just wing it. Like, these are sort of, hey, feel it out in the moment, you got a tight 45 seconds go sort of thing. And they're clean. I was very impressed with these. Yeah, if you had told me, oh, there's going to be six tag team promos, I'm like, oh, these, okay, great and they're going to be bloated and blah and it's like no these were fast cut they had a reason except for one i i, I was very much excited to uh, watch it mm. i really really love this match i really did this match won me over for how much i loved taya and i was just like oh my gosh i miss heel taya this is so much fun this is again aew why why we did not use her properly i will never understand but Rachel put up a hell of a fight too, but this was Taya's coming out party. She's like, sure. all right, she's in Ring of Honor now. Let's go. I've heard you all speak of Taya Valkyrie for many a days now, and I was much enamored as well. I will say this politically correct. Quite the looker, in my opinion. I love her barking French at the eye. <laughs> Just yelling, how are you, to the crowd. <laughs> like, bonjour, and then beating people's ass. I thought it was a clean match. I thought it was fun. Like, again, the women's wrestling is always on point and we've talked about that on other podcasts where it, it is my opinion and the opinion of a JVL and maybe others where the women wrestlers are in a position where they have to work way harder right. and they put way more time in so they are just cleaner and have more finesse and just do a lot of these things quicker faster better and that's we could talk hours on that I'm not going to this is fun this is great and again my introduction to this television guy who just mm -hmm. is greasy and drives me crazy because it just, it reminds me of high school. And ah, you get her. I hate you so much. That's just me. I mean, to be fair, there's probably plenty of people that look at her and go, oh, you get him. So, yeah. That's, you know what, fair. Why, you're right. You're right. I don't mean to be head or no. I mean, they are, they are, I've, I've been a fan of them since I saw them, like, way back, I think it was, like, pre-Lucha Underground days. And, mm. like, them as a couple, like, they are when I think of star couple mm. in professional wrestling. Sure. Even though they haven't been, like, major world champions in, you know, the places that some people would consider making it. But He's, they, he was in, you know, a lot of Johnny Mercury and Johnny oh. Nitro. Oh, Is that what shoot. It was? Yeah. He changes his last name every company he goes to. So he was Johnny Mundo, Johnny Nitro, Johnny Impact. Now he's Johnny TV. But yeah, the two of them are stellar. And Taya came out for this match looking like a champion. Like, when she enters and just the way she carries herself in the ring, she feels like a champion. And I like that we have someone like that in uh, Ring of Honor because I think she balances well with a lot of the other, like, you know, more established competitors like Athena, like Mercedes Martinez, you know, some of those folks, as well as some of the people that are kind of coming up. That sliding German suplex that Taya hit when I uh, was in the ropes, that was mm -hmm. pretty sick. You know, I thought this was a good match, both for Taya because she got to come out and win, which I feel like that was the right call but i also think this was a good match in the storytelling that we're getting for rachel 
and you know kind of that whole what's happening with her maria and layla i love the way they're telling this and dragging it out it's making maria really that like mastermind that kind of manipulator which is great i think it's you know they're all doing a great job in this and getting to see ty and johnny tv maybe johnny honor at some point is awesome i hope they stay here i hope they can join into whichever divisions is going to fit for them because I, I think they'll just be some great performers and i think this is a great uh, area for them to perform in so yeah uh, it was awesome uh, i'm happy and i hope Taya stays here for a while because if she keeps getting used like this it'll be really good well at least she's being used in ring of honor because we <laughs> haven't seen much of her on aew and we're fine with that but does Ring of Honor always have two women's matches? They have more. Like I feel, I feel have like, I'm ooh. jaded. I feel spoiled by two. They have more than that? I'm good. Oh, yeah. 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 Four, four or five matches, a bunch of women's segments sometimes. Like, literally, what was it? Like, during Thanksgiving week, we literally got a random match. Like, Marina Shafir and Ronda Rousey taking oh, yeah. on Athena taking and on Athena and Billy Starks, which was a phenomenal match. Super good. It was good. Really so good. Yeah. But... Man, my excitement kept going for this because we get a video promo that was released on social media that is hyping up Ethan Page versus Tony Nese in what is now an I Quit match at Final Battle, which I was like, yes, give it to me. This is the Again, there have been parts to this where it's been a little bit of a clunky build, but at least we're building towards pay-per-view matches, and this is yeah. one of them for Final Battle. I am super excited for this I Quit match at Final Battle. This is going to be a great part. And then I get to, we, me and Andrew get the lovely privilege to introduce John to who we have affectionately called the Mama's Boys. <laughs> Cole Carter and Griff Garrison taking on local job talent Sean Moore and Bobby Sharp. Not much to say here. Mama's Boys pick up the win. But These are called yeah. Mama's Boys. <laughs> Let me paint you a picture real quick. So as much as we love Ring of Honor, there's a lot of highs. <laughs> there's a lot of good things. This is not one of them, and here's why. Cole Carter specifically, generic creator wrestler number 522. I mean, that's kind of what they were trying to make it sound like, but that could have been anybody. So I will say my hate for Cole Carter has not, has kind of hey. gone down at the more I see him. I was like, you could tell he's still green, but he is learning. And it's kind of nice to have him be paired up with Griff Garrison, who knows the business. And so my hate for this team has lessened and lessened the more hate? I see them. So much hate from you. Okay, wow. but here's why I hated it. Because originally, before they were a tag team, it was just Cole Carter and Maria by okay. themselves. And this literally was Mommy Milf, like, the storyline. It was so horrible. Like, Mommy Dearest. Like, Cole Carter was... Like, he would wear a shirt that said, like, I love hot moms. And yes. possibly be like, Maria, did you see my shirt? Oh, is that like, what did they you were... See my match? Did you see my match? That's what they were talking about. Okay, got it. It was so bad, John. It was so bad. And, right. then they, and then they paired Griff Garrison with them. And at first it was a hot mess as well. I was like, why are we pairing Griff here? But then over time, it's gotten less of that. And then Maria's like, all right, y'all need to get it together. We're trying to make a name for ourselves. Stop being dumb. And you know what? It's worked. And I like them as a team now. So it's not as bad because they dropped the whole, like, mommy dearest notice me, like, storyline that we started okay. with. Hulk, and now it's just Maria awkwardly singing. It they're basically they're two they're like two young boys one of them is always trying to look how good he is for mom and the other one is just trying to be the like the older one almost like i like that griff garrison has gotten angrier like mm -hmm. that he was way meaner when he was wrestling and then he was also talking smack to more when he was this was a much meaner Griff Garrison and I like that mm. that's kind of the influence that Cole Carter and Maria have had on him you know See, I they, think he said that and then they kind of dropped it is it the same color yeah awkward it's gonna work like a tag team and they're starting to do that more and more like you know they had a really good finish in their last victory and then in this I like that they didn't hit a finishing move but it was one of those they like both got so fed up with their opponents that they just like did some hard hits and just knocked them out and then that was it and i thought you know they they make them look better every time they come out okay. and their style is supposed to be they're they're not supposed to be likable like i, I think that's a big part of it and are they I young think, they're young, young yeah, yeah. Right? they're super young cole carter's like 22 or something okay. and griff garrison is 26. okay fair so yeah, they're both in their 20s. So I think the part that I really enjoy is the fact of like how their characters are supposed to be received. 
is very much how uh, my fellow hosts received them for the past few weeks. So there's a part of me that gets an enjoyment out of that because you're supposed to cringe when you see Cole Carter like go to blow a kiss to the audience and then realize like, no, 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 Maria, Maria the whole time. Like, yeah, it's so irritating, but, and look what I can do, mom, 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 look what I can do. <laughs> like, it's very much that style, but I get it. And it, you know, it's supposed to be that way. And so I, I think I get an extra kick out of it when it bucks people like it's supposed to. Fair. I love it. Of course, Cole Carter and Griff Garrison pick up the win here. Then third tag team promo backstage, the workhorsemen of you know, I love the workhorse. JD Drake should talk more. Anthony should not. <laughs> Why are they? The, this is one of the dumbest names I've ever heard. The workhorsemen. It fits them. It fits them. They the way they wrestle, like it, it fits them. Dumb. They're also out here wrestling in pretty much every promotion on under yes. the sun too. Hey, then better than the workhorsemen like you were the lone rangers you pluralized lone ranger like what are you doing like that's just a blah name to me a yep. promo and then he just kind of looks off camera drops his physique and just looks away while the other guy says Best team in the world. yeah and then it's just awkward like blah. It's like what are you do you want yeah, to be we've said today? This, we, we said this on multiple occasions and jbl has very strong feelings about this but Anthony Green is not the most charismatic half of the workhorsemen. That's all JD Drake. Yeah. Who's I don't and know who's who. Who is who? JD, JD is the, the big guy. Yeah, oh, the big guy. I, I thought he he was fine. He looks like a professional wrestler. The other guy was like, why are you here? We love JD in this household. <laughs> like, we, do we? Okay. I mean, I I wasn't. I they're had no they're a really wow. good tech team, but it's just, uh, yeah, on the sometimes... mic is not the best. Okay. I mean, the six-man yeah. tag, okay, I know that's not a fair judgment, but... Yeah, Anthony Henry is one of those, like, shh, don't talk, just stay. Okay. Just Sander. wrestle when it's time. You mean Big Bill style? Yeah. Okay, I can see that. All right. Oh, my goodness. So, from here, we get into our next match. I kind of want to gloss over this, because out of all the matches we got tonight, I was like, eh, it was all right. Shane yeah. Taylor of Shane Taylor Productions takes on local talent, Channing <laughs> Decker. Shane Taylor wins. We got to give Shane Taylor a win because, listen, this is about to be the biggest man meat slap match at Final Battle because he's going to be taking on Keith Lee, and I'm so excited. It's gonna be great. I miss Keith Lee. I haven't seen Keith Lee in forever. We're excited because we get to see Keith Lee. Stick him in Ring of Honor. Let him just stay there. Keith Lee since the Keith Lee, Orange Cassidy, Darby Allen monster that whole, thing, and that was yeah. months ago. Shane Taylor looked like a beast is what I wrote down. All I wrote was <laughs> Decker going to die and... Yeah, and I don't want to sit too long along on this one, but Ring of Honor was given the local talent some play here. Shane was Shane was selling for him, like they they made a match of it, so that was cool. Like we said, Ring of Honor lets the local talent shine, and all the wrestlers are cool. The yeah. whole roster is cool, which is letting them. There's hardly any yeah. ego that we've seen in Ring of Honor like this. Like it's so. I want to work at Ring of Honor. It seems chill. <laughs> when they they when you see some of these local talent come in or just people that are not main roster folks you'll see they'll usually have like one or two other ring of honor matches under their belt so it's you know when they find people that they like especially young talent they try to bring them in because you know that was a lot of what ring of honor did before but i just feel like we're spinning our wheels on the shane taylor productions and him and lee moriarty and lee johnson and this thing you know with keith lee like i get it but it feels like it got forgot about and then someone was like oh hey we need an oh weren't we doing something with these guys and then that's what they announced yeah. it for final battle i was like what happened we had a storyline in ring of yeah. honor then they stopped then they tried to bring it to dynamite that didn't work we kind of forgot about it and then i saw on social media that it was made for final battle i'm like what yeah. hasn't and keith lee been dropped from like five different feuds he got listen swerve, that's the other half of it too this, i was like then, what are we doing with keith lee it makes me two bad. other ones that was like and no, we're gonna do this and then keith, keith lee, just... keith lee should have won the television title from samoa joe we had yes. enough time back when that happened that Samoa Joe could have built up to facing MJF for the title still. Instead and of Lee, vacating it. <laughs> and Keith Lee could have come into the final battle and faced Shane Taylor for to defend the television title in whatever kind of match they want to do. You could have still had this six-man match uh, to go up for a title shot. 
But we could have actually been building to this instead of yeah. just deciding to half-ass it at this point. Are they, like, just, are they mad at Keith Lee, or is this just I don't bad know. booking? I don't. I think it's bad booking. I'm like, huh? yeah, they haven't done it with Shane Taylor really either. Like, I, I really am have begun to lose interest in whatever is going on with Shane Taylor and Shane Taylor Productions. Like, Lee Moriarty is having more stuff go on than Shane Taylor is at this point, and I just it's don't... All, like, yeah, it's also hurting Lee, too, which makes me sad. Yeah. I love Taiga Style, and we're not doing Taiga Style correctly. Yeah. I'm like, it makes me sad, but again, Shane wins here. We move on. So, speaking of that Ring of Honor television champion, we have a hype package that gives us, you know, we are told that five out of the six participants are going to be participating, and they're like, you will find out this last participant at Final Battle. I was like, oh, it's probably going to be an indie talent, isn't it? Like, one of the bigger names in the promotions, which I'm here for. I was like, let's sign folks to Ring of Honor, because 2024, I want to see I, I feel like the last two in that, because it's a last man standing match, right? The six sur six man survival match. Something like that. And honestly, they yeah. haven't really explained how that's going to work I, either. I, I think that's what it is. I think it's last man standing. If it is, I feel like the last two people are going to be Dalton Castle and this mystery person. That's my Ooh, my, I'm here my guess. But I'm excited yeah. for this match. It's going to be great. So, I might have... Some of our other co-hosts text messaged us in the group chat, and they felt differently about this match. I thought oh. it was fine. The Righteous versus the Australian Takeover. And again, I appreciate Ian and Caprice always commentary, like Dutch just doing the snake tongue thing, like ah, blah, blah, blah. I was just like, it gets creepier and creepier every oh, time I see man. Dutch do it. And I think that- it doesn't look like, like a snake tongue. Yeah, it looks no. like something else. No. I was like, he had way too many popsicles as a child. Yeah, that's what it was, Mikey. Popsicles. Again, not demonetized, you know what I meant. Ski team! Ski team! We're on the ski team! We brought it back! I actually thought the Australian takeover kind of tried to sell the hell out of everything they could for Ooh. this. They were also, sadly, both of them were probably like 5-1 or 2 up against the righteous who are not. This is my first introduction to the righteous. I've heard you all speak of the righteous okay. many times. They have a great look. They're fun in the ring. I wish it was more of a match introduction for me to them, so I want to see them do something else for sure. I kind of buy their culty stick and angelic but not thing. For those of you out there that have seen Far Cry 5, the cult with all the folks That's in the woods. That's exactly how I describe the righteous to Is everybody. That? Yes. You're kidding. Are you no. serious? No, no that's Mikey. That's how I've been describing it on here to my co-host and to everybody else that watch. I was like, the best description I can give. Remember the bad guys from Far Cry 5? Yes! <laughs> that. It's them! It's John and his sons with weird tattoos and they've got poison flowers and they're culty I have never things. loved you more than I have Dude, right now. Mikey! <laughs> you and I speak the same language. I gotta go play four. My son wants me to play four. I just got it the other day. It's on. It's in Maku. So yeah, that, that's just how it felt to me. <laughs> I was like, this is creepy weird. I love it. I'm fine with it. As for an introduction, great. Kind of want to see more. But I, I again, and this is a theme. Like the the local talent that they brought in, selling it and getting sp spots. I think I re I absolutely appreciate that. Yeah, I didn't rank this match. It was pretty much a squash match, but I do like getting to see them being more vicious, especially seeing Vincent uh, being so brutal, but being so like carefree about it. Uh, I like to see it. I thought uh, their match last week, we got to see more of an actual match, which I'd like to start seeing. I wrote down on here that the Righteous should be the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions, because I think them with the titles could head up the division with so many options behind them that it could they would just do phenomenal as, as the Tag Team Champions. I, I think they got something here, and I would like to see more. We're starting to get to the point, we're starting to get to the Wardlow point, where it's like, we don't need to see squashes anymore. Let's see Seriously. some Seriously. John so, Lass, because he knows how we how, how? There, was a, there was a good 10 minute rant in the middle of the dynamite review yesterday about what you just said. see of me so yeah. good yeah. match but it was a squatch so you know it was fun to see that on a night of tag teams a good reminder of who one of the top tag teams are and hopefully we'll sure. see that soon absolutely sure. and we're not done with tag teams because we get our final backstage interview of the last tag team participating in this four way that we're going to have later the infantry with listen the infantry their energy and their charisma is so infectious and lexi just thrives off of just the randomness of it 
I love that uh, towards the end of this, just like, no, girl, don't salute as they walk. Yeah, you put, no, no, put that down. I thought they were fun. They, they just seemed like two dudes that I would like to hang out with, which I was yeah. fine with. I They're wish I saw tag team. I wish I saw more of them in that six man a little bit. I, everyone, no, I don't think anyone got a full showcase in that six man. But just as a promo, I was like, y'all are fun. I like it. Yep. They're a fun ta- yeah, they're a fun tag team, and if you continue to watch Ring of Honor, their whole entire faction too. If you love the infantry, I personally think, and I'm putting my stake on my, I'm putting my card as a wrestling fan on, you know, the line here. I think you'll really like Trisha Dora, who is part of their faction. She is amazing in the okay. ring. Sure. She is also a mili- former military mm-hmm. personnel too. So that's what. So yeah, their thing, their former. All army three dudes, of right? them. All three of them were actual they served in the army yeah. or not army they oh. served in the military period yeah because uh carly bravo is marines okay sean dean is air force and, I and then think trish Trishador is, is army army cool yeah. very cool that's that's they yeah, had so that like, one yeah they, they had one time when they came out with the wrestling gear and sean dean and carly bravo actually had the logos for their branch on mm-hmm. one leg and then they had their regular logo on the other side. Uh, so, I really liked when they did that. I'd like to see that again. I really do too. But we have all the tag team set up for our Fatal 4-Way down the line later in the night. But first, we get into our singles match between one-third of the six-man Ring of Honor World Championships. Brian Cage taking on everyone's favorite phenomenon, Gravity. I love Gravity. I love Brian Cage. Yeah. I wrote... I've never seen the Gravity before. I I, great. <laughs> I like the gravity. I have no problem with the gravity. I thought it was kind of funny that he's basically just wearing a spirit store astronaut suit. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's a $30 suit. I Let me better. tell you, when he teamed up with the boys, he had like a boy mask <laughs> and wrestled in that thing the whole entire time. It was oh, so goofy wrestling through life. I thought it was fun. I thought I haven't seen Brian Cage look this agile in a while. And that might be just me. You all probably have seen him more. Normally, he's just sort of big, lumbering, unlimited. He was doing, you know, knee drags and and was getting out of the way a little differently and kind of had this role, that role more than I've seen. So I'm not sure if he's had work done or if he was just feeling better or if he wasn't getting used every week for a year. Maybe he had some time off or whatever else. So I, I like seeing Ryan Cage. I might be biased because he's from where we work and teach up here in Northern California. Always fun to see him. There was a great look Brian Cage has at the beginning of this that I wrote down where Gravity just walks in and you just see this face of like, this guy. And then he goes into the match like this sort of, I can't believe I'm doing this. But it was clean. I thought it was a good match. I thought it was fun. Uh, I, I wanted to see more out of said Gravity. I know the commentary was kind of building it up and they were like, Brian Cage went to Mexico and used to do lucha stuff and this and this, even though this isn't what he's doing. But I, I think I need to see Gravity in a different capacity to really feel the weight of Gravity. That's a hell of a sentence I just said out loud. I thought this was a really good match. I think Brian Cage shines every time he fights uh, a luchador because he's faced so many. The fact that Gravity was able to use Brian Cage in the similar manner as which he uses the ring post. Yeah. Just shows point. you how strong Brian Cage is, but also how good he is at working with luchadors. That moonsault to the uh from the top rope that uh gravity hit and instead of going straight up and over he kind of went to the side so he like kind of hit brian cage and then hit the ground was almost yeah was brutal but he popped right back up and got back into it so you know i'm I'm happy to see that didn't happen it was a good match it was fun i thought both guys did kind of what you expect of them I like that Cage ended it with that brutal like anchor submission instead of uh, one of his more power moves or knockout moves. Stepping on the neck while doing yeah. that, like, oh, oh. I will be happy once Gates of Agony is back and we can actually see Mogul Embassy do some six-man uh, matches. But yeah, it's always awesome to see Brian Cage. I've, always, I've been a big fan of him as a wrestler. Uh, yeah. So I'd like to get to see him do more. And Gravity is great. You know, he's kind of coming up. You know, we'll get to see his brother soon again. But I like that Gravity's getting used every week. Uh, and I like that Ring of Honor definitely, like, 
is also a place where luchadors kind of get to come and shine, you know, between like Commander, Gravity, Metallic, the Kingo, like all those guys that come out and look really good. So I thought this was a great match. It was definitely one of my top matches of the night. And, uh, you know, it was fun, fun finish to see Cage be extra brutal. Yeah. I love Brian Cage and I am so happy that he's here. And we get to see him as well in Final Battle, which we'll talk about towards the end of this. <laughs> From here, we get Murray Canellas be the ultimate gaslight queen that I have ever seen her be. <laughs> like, so Rachel Ella Ring is backstage. She's bummed she lost to Tyra. Taya Valkyrie, Layla Hirsch comes to con- Surprisingly, for a character development for Layla, she actually comes and, mm-hmm. you know, comforts Rachel in her loss because the whole entire story that we've been told of so far, John, is these. T- Rachel is trying, she wants to be cool with Layla, but Layla's like, I don't need nobody. And then we're slowly bringing them together. And Maria okay. has kind of pushed them together a little bit. And so now it's fun to see them now that they're getting close to Maria is trying to pull Layla away from Rachel now all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. I was just like, Maria, I see the game we're playing here. <laughs> like, I see what you're doing. Fair, all right, that makes sense. I Ellering's the only one that I felt was in the moment. I thought Maria's her name. Maria is the is the other is the milf. Mom. The redhead, yeah. Redhead. I think she was a little schmactery for me, but we're in pro wrestling land, so fine. I, Layla just needs more reps, is what my feeling was. It's like we just got to get you in front of the camera, talking out loud and breathing more. I don't know what time she's had or whatever. It was just a little clunky. Her getting kind of stuck in that pair of three and not knowing what to say and how to interject. Like, and you know, that comes with time. I'm not sure. I'm sure JBL said something about that <laughs> at some point because JBL and I didn't think the same on that. Okay, promo, fine. I see how it fits into a greater narrative, so I don't want to be too hard on it either, but it's fine, yeah. Look at that. We have multiple women's stories developing and doing, which- I don't is- know what that's like. What's that like? That's so new to me. See, Ring of Honor has become our little oasis that we love to keep to ourselves, but we also like sharing it with other folks too. And you know, tag teams are actually respected for the most part in Ring of Honor too. Yeah. It's a great haven. Y'all should come check it out. Kind of like Thursday night is a good night for wrestling. I'll say that the promotions that are on Thursdays, they do a lot of things really well. And I'm, I'm Friday happy. night reviews are yeah. so much fun because I don't really have to worry about really god awful stuff. Even the awful stuff is not necessarily as bad as everything else throughout the week. I kind of love that on streaming you can just get away with cool shit. So good it's so good from here we get into what we've been building with all these promos we get our four-way tag team match which sees the butcher and the blade versus the infantry versus the workhorsemen versus ripped out of every 80s movie ever the outrunners i love them so much so good i'm all in on that them i love it so this match was interesting in the sense that on paper these are really four fun teams you can have in here. When we got to the end of the match, while I still enjoyed myself, I feel that there was parts of the over in-ring storytelling and in-ring psychology that kind of didn't click and missed a little bit for me. Sure. And I, I'm on the same mindset of you, John, as I feel like the infantry, while they got time to shine, I felt like there was a good chunk of them missing from this match. Yeah. But then again, of the four tag teams, the infantry is still the freshest of yep. the teams in here. They've only okay. been tagging for like, what, a year and a half, two years only right now. So oh, really? Yeah, really? so they, they've come a long way since their original days, but they're still fresh. They're like, ba- they're the fresh baby faces of this division. Okay. And of course, it makes sense when you have the workhorse men who basically wrestle anywhere and everywhere. The Butcher and the Blade have been tagging way past their stint on AEW. They've been together almost forever. And then the Outrunners, they will surprise you because they look like a joke based on their gimmick that they're doing. But Lord have mercy, their in-ring ability is not to be stomped on. Like it is- You can only have that gimmick if you are good. Mm-hmm. Like you gotta be tactically clean and be able to work with anybody if that's gonna be your, if you're gonna be a throwback to the late 80s like that, you cannot suck. You better own it and know what, cause if you're like that and you're bad, now you're a joke of a joke and you're not gonna meet up to, you know, now you're 
subverting it quickly, in my opinion. I thought this was fun. I'm not used to this because this is the, the way you do the Ring of Honor that you do. I think it's it's fun. I, I like Butcher and Blade a lot. I've missed them. I haven't seen them in a long time. I kind of miss the monocle too, but that's just me. Yeah, man. Them, them, I, I'm a huge fan of my my new late 1980s friends so i'm going to be checking in with them to make sure that's shocking to me that infantry is only a year uh, as a tag i would not have noticed that they seem really clean and the promo and what i saw of them this isn't a gauge i get that yeah, yeah i again i don't think anyone shine there were some cool spot there was a few spots in here in the middle i was like oh that's wait hang on what happened i had to go back and check again yeah i mean i thought the, my biggest issue with this match is the same thing I brought up in the past few weeks. Is it, It's fun to see the tag teams. I thought a lot of tag teams showed in there, and it was kind of the same situation where watching this made me want to see more actual tag team matches because as much as it was nice to get to see all four tag teams, I would have rather have seen two of any of these teams face each other in a full-out tag match because they're all so good. I love... I think one of the things that's really nice about Ring of Honor's tag division is, you know, we, we've got a lot of variety and they all, we've seen it multiple times. They've worked really well together. It was fun, but it could have done more and we could have seen more detail than broad strokes. I wish there was like a, a tag team Continental Classic, right? Like that would have been mm -hmm. worth pairing up all these like you're saying, this, these diverse groups, these really totally different style tag teams, and then watching them all pair up for points or whatever arbitrary storyline you want, and hope that none of them get buried, which we just talked about yeah. the other night. Right. Oh my. I'm because in a, in a in a big monster thing like this, nobody gets to really showcase anything. Mm -hmm. It's just sort of blind tags and, and sort of, oh, that's surprise. Oh, this is happening. As opposed to, like you're saying, like real clean. This is how we yeah. work together type stuff. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed if Ring of Honor does something like we do in New Japan, where they have the Super Juniors Tag Team Tournament. And literally, it's just tag team wrestling, which they just finished right now. Like, mm -hmm. listen, if Ring of Honor and AEW want to be using like New Japan inspired tournaments, I'm not here. I'm here for it. Especially in the tag team division, I think it'd be really good and it works out because you have a lot of Ring of Honor tag teams you can use and then bring in the tag teams from AEW that you don't listen. I just want this to get an excuse to get the kingdom to come back. I miss them so much. And they weren't involved in the black hole that is the MJFs. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. But you're in a blade, pick up the victory, which in my opinion, I think, yes. like Andrew, you said, I think is the right choice, especially because we have a lot of face teams in <laughs> Ring of Honor. We need to start establishing some of the heels. Realistically, we only have the righteous, and Butcher and the Blade, kind of the work horsemen, but they're more like in Gates of Agony. Gates of Agony, but a lot of the tag teams are baby faces. So it's nice to see Butcher and the Blade. I'm just happy to see them win. I'm like, yeah. I'm like they're winning and they're actually being booked okay. And they've only been on Ring of Honor television program for like less than three weeks. Like I'm here for it. Okay, so the match that we're about to talk next. Like, the match was fine. Like, it was cool. You know, Ring of Honor Women's Championship Ruby Ground match, the men and women's world champion, Athena. Yes, I said it because the, Athena has been carrying a Ring of Honor for both the men and the women on her mm -hmm. back for the last year with this title reigns. This is a Ruby Ground match between her and Roxanne. This was a fine match. Obviously, we knew Roxanne had no chance at winning, but you know what? She still got some fun stuff in. Athena ends up winning, but we're all here to talk about what happened afterwards because this is setting everything up. But Andrew, go ahead. I do, I do have to say something because again, this was such a squatch that like I didn't rank this match. Everything about this was everything after the match. But sure. I loved, I loved, and I feel this made me think of Will because he's such a big you know proponent for this is Athena put her hand out to shake for the code of honor and uh, Roxanne reacts with, I've seen what you do though. Like, I don't want to shake your hand because I know what you're going to do. Like, she was like, no, I watch TV. I'm not an idiot. Like, I know what's going to happen. So I like that they gave her that moment before she just got knocked out and then uh, we got to move on with the story. But I just had to bring that up, give her a little bit of character credit for that one. I love it. And yeah. a shout out to Will because he loves when characters actually use their brains within wrestling. It's like, I watched mm -hmm. the product too. I know what's about to go down. But 
Oh, we had a whole, like, what, month and a half of on impact with the, the rascals. rascals you assume yeah. spray paint to win their matches by spraying it in the opponent's eyes and then he lost his mind in a way when speedball figured out the, no when abc figured out the yeah. trick they're like nope he'd love to see it will's not wrong <laughs> no everything so let's get into the meat and potatoes of this because as athena celebrating her squatch match victory woo! oh man billy starks comes out and this is the second brawl that we got in two weeks and this was great but the added part of it is that, and I found out reports that Athena legit has a broken nose now. <laughs> so I was like, really? Violet. But in the weird way, this kind of fits with Athena's wow. character. Like, but listen, I'm excited for this main, and yes, this is main eventing final battle. The Ring yeah, of yeah. Honor Women's Championship is your main event for final battle, which I was like, listen, the year of women main eventing the Ring of Honor pay-per-views this year is great. I think Athena and Billy are going to kill it just as much as Willow and Athena killed it at Death Before Dishonor in July. I feel like it could go either way, but I'm really rooting for our little minion to win and take this title off of Athena. The way that Billy looked after she attacked Athena and she slammed Woo! her in the face. Oh my gosh. Chair, and they were trying to pull her back. She like had this smile and this look in her eyes that the only way I can think of it is like, so <laughs> we're a big boxer family as in the type of dog. And boxers are so high energy, but the thing is, the way that they play, it's so rough. Um, a lot of other dogs, especially dogs that aren't used to it, don't understand. So I've had boxers that will like almost get into fights with other dogs, especially like German Shepherds. And the other dog is like so angry and like trying to like show dominance. And the boxers are like, "Hey, what's up? I'm having fun doing this violence." <laughs> And that's what Billy looked like. She didn't change the fundamental Billy. That's still there, but now she can go there with Athena. And God, this match is going to be so good. They're both so good. And the fact that Billy is 18, like really, really, yes, she, she is yeah. 18 years old. Just graduated high school like a couple months ago. What? She she's in the category yeah. of what we like to call prodigies of wrestling, where like the Roxanne's from NXT's or the Nick Wayne's from AEW. Wow. Like, these are kids that have been doing this since they were like 11 and 10. Like yeah. literally they come from families who do this for a living. Soraya being another oh, one because wow. she was like, what, barely 19, 20 when she won the Divas title in WWE too? Well, like, it, they're, they're on the same level as a lot of the like Mexican wrestlers who, mm -hmm. you know, it's in their family or their friends sure. and been they're training wrestling from like childhood. You yeah. know? It's, the, it's a trade. It's not yeah. just a performance. It's like, no, this yeah. is what we do here. So I think I just rewatched it. Yeah. Her face is smashed. In <laughs> She's 18 doing this? Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Just, She's that's so great. 18 about to headline uh, the Ring of Honor pay per view for the main event too. World title. Like, God. It, and she's so good. And she's definitely in this year has become one of my top top performers and uh, so is Athena like the work that she's put in she's like 43 and 0 now in Ring of Honor or something like that she's oh, held this title wow. for a whole year yeah. yeah I'm just now catching that Athena's covered in blood at the end of this. yeah wow she, so I those barricade shots too when uh, Billy was throwing mm -hmm. Athena into the barricades was like full bore wow. Athena was just going non-stop into those i thought this was great setup this is exactly this is how you end a go home show with your main event with your main title with the two rivals heading it up and this story was oh so this sure. is how you tell wrestling stories with long-term storytelling to mm -hmm. build to a big event and i'm so happy because <clears throat> with so many other promotions and so many other big cards we've had phenomenal cards but the buildups have not led you to believe that they're gonna be. We, they've gotten away with having, okay, on the day, on the day, it's good, but you don't build us up any tension with that stuff. This right. has been the exception to that for this year, and they've done a phenomenal job. I, I am so excited. This is gonna be so much fun. So, really quickly, we've come to the end of Ring of Honor, so we're gonna quickly give our rating, and then we're also gonna quickly go over our predictions for final battle which is at the time of this recording oh, happening no, I, right now <laughs> yes. i don't i don't have any jokes. that's okay you could watch me and andrew go back and forth and be like sure. tell each other why we're wrong no, all right so 
here on the Ring of Honor, we like to use out of 10 scale. So out of 10, what is it just numbers? You can't, you can't just have a 10. Whatever you would like. You know what, since we've been doing this for almost a year and a half and how much we love it, we never really put a thing on it, but we, we I love it that we're making this an official thing without two of our co-hosts being here, but that's what we get for missing. <laughs> we're out of 10. We're going to use the minion I scales. Am, I am your, uh, I'm your chaotic neutral. I minions? like that. Minions. We're going to use the minion scale. So out of 10 right. minions, out of 10 how minions. would we rate this Ring of Honor episode? Out of, yeah, this is a, this one was a lot of fun. I'm gonna give this a, in a weird way, even though it was a go home show. Like, and really, the only thing that really mattered was what happened at the end of this, because all the other matches, like, it's fine. I still think the Ring of Honor show in general. I'm actually gonna give this like a solid eight out of ten. I thoroughly mm. enjoyed myself, and that's something I love about Ring of Honor. Each week, while I have my gripes about some of the things that happened, this was a fun episode. Kind of makes me mad that we're missing two co-hosts as well, because I think they would have enjoyed this as well. There was a lot of, again, we got a lot of women's stuff, a lot of tag team action happening tonight. The What happened after the main event with Athena and Billy just ready to destroy each other at final battle is going to be great. I felt like it felt good to be a wrestling fan once again. And maybe the bar was set low because of what happened the previous night of what I had to sit through through a boring ass dynamite and just... <laughs> The crap shoot that oh, was that man. whole entire thing. Listen, I have never, Watch. Spicy Mikey has never been spicier. If you, Andrew, if you go check it out, be prepared because I go off a lot. But eight out of 10 for this Ring of Honor. I'm going to come to Andrew. I'm going to go to you first, and then we're going to go to our guest. All right. Yeah, it was a good Ring of Honor. Uh, it felt, I don't want to say heavy, but full. It was a solid show. See? Oh, wow. Now we come to John, our adjunct hey. professor here for the bro. <laughs> adjunct for life. God. Uh, on a minion scale, and minions as in the Twinkies with big eyes, I, I'm, I'm kind of feeling like y'all. I think it's, for me, being brand new to Ring of Honor, if I'm looking at this like all the other things I've been watching, I mean, this is in that 8 out of 10 place for me. It was a lot of fun. It was refreshing to watch something different. It was nice to watch narratives going somewhere. It's nice to see the women get some rung wrong get some run excuse me words i love seeing local talent get play that makes me super happy it just felt more engaging maybe because i'm just jaded by the way dynamite kind of missed the other night and how wwe kind of forces the wrong things or i'm just waiting for you to mess it up not to invoke other promotions here this was fun and something different i kind of needed to watch to go oh yeah it does work <laughs> when it works, it kind of feels like that. We talked about there's a, the reason it's not 10 out of 10 because there was a few spots here and there, and then I, I might have, I like to see a bit more things in the first half of the night like we discussed. But yeah, it was super solid. Lots of fun. Had me engaged for someone who didn't know anything. It was also nice sitting there and be like, oh, you're over here now. Oh, this <laughs> is where you've been. Oh, that's what you are. I'm excited for some tag teams I've never seen. And uh, I, I might... I, I don't know if I'm going to crash your reviews, but I might start paying more attention to the Ring of Honors. Andrew, we're slowly spreading the wealth because, John, you're not the only person who might want to crash our reviews now from the Biconics boys. You're going to have six people on this thing? Oh, absolutely <laughs> not. We would never get anything done. But in case, I will definitely put you and our other you know, member who may want to crash the review from time to time, oh, Adolfo, no. as retainers. So in case we can't, Yo. in case some of us can't make it, we could get people to fill in because and we're you trying know this, to induct it, everyone in the Ring of Honor cult. If it's me, Adolfo, and JBL, nothing's, nothing's going to get, get done. done. What do you throw yeah, no. out here? We oh, when we get off camera. Oh no, what happened? No, nothing. Usually we're pretty good at keeping it under an hour. We're at an hour and a half. I don't care. JBL is not here to give me any rules. So therefore I do what I want. Speaking of doing what I want, let's quickly go through the final battle. We're going to see how well these aged because literally we're reviewing this pay-per-view on Monday. So we're going to see how well this predictions age. So Professor John is going to just watch me and Andrew go back and forth and just sit here and just like and flip a coin, pick who you. I mean, yes. I don't know. I don't even know if I have a coin. Hang on, I'll just I'll just go random. Let me <laughs> let me look for the card. Go ahead. Honestly, random is probably going to work with you because Lord have mercy, he still has the Nostradamus pick of Shane Man returning and blowing out the quad at WrestleMania. I mean, I'm going to lean on that forever. That's still one of the coolest cat. things ever. Final battle, right? 
Ooh. Yes, so final okay. battle, I sent it in the main part of our group chat. So I'm not, so I mean, at the time of this recording, we've only have one confirmed pre-show match for Zero Hour, which is the Outrunners, who we just talked about, taking on the Von Eriks of all people in a tag team match. So that's interesting. Because they're in Texas, I have to give it to the Von Eriks. Like, I, it's going to be Von Eriks. It's Von Eriks are winning because they're in Texas, which hurts me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just to be a, uh, you know, yes. devil's, devil's shoe toy. I'm gonna go uh, with the not outrunners. Even not even advocate yeah. shoe toy. I <laughs> love that. Because they're the home heroes as far as Ring of Honor goes. Maybe they'll allow them to pick up the victory to build them up going forward with Ring of Honor tag. Uh, maybe they'll get some shenanigans in there. But yeah, this will talk about a throwback match. That's gonna be some classic right there. I'm excited. I can't wait. Okay. So yes, we have complained about the build to this card because outside of Athena and Billy, everything else has kind of either been forgotten or put together just for this card. But yo, the people they got booked for this show though makes me really, really happy. So I'm gonna start at the bottom of this card. The I quit group. Well, actually no, I take that back because Ethan Page and Tony yeah. Nice like have actually had story built to this. So. Tony Nese and Ethan Page, and I have, I want to, mm. I mean, they've gone back and forth. They each have kind of been even in this feud. I have to give it to Ethan. I think Ethan winning here would actually do more for him in Ring of Honor than Tony winning. Tony can continue to be Tony. Yeah, I agree. I think this, this has been set up for Ethan Page to win uh, during the promo. I think they built it up really good. I am ready for an angry, all ego Ethan Page who takes Tony Nese to that limit. Pulls out that victory, gets the big push, but I feel like this is they're they're gonna do something big with Ethan Page, and now's the time to push him. Right. So next up, I'm gonna say the championship matches later. We have Shane Taylor versus Keith Lee. See, it hurts because I want to care more about this match, but I kind of want. I'm just because I like him. I'm gonna pick Keith. I think Keith should win here. Listen, put Keith Lee in Ring of Honor. That's all I ask. Yeah, I agree. I think Keith Lee should win this because I think this should be the restart of Keith Lee and Ring of Honor. I think he comes out, has a hard match with Shane Taylor, hopefully comes out victorious, and then we get to see uh, Keith Lee be another big figure in Ring of Honor, because I think he is another top tier uh, performer that they could use to build up Ring of Honor's divisions. And now's the time to kind of be like, oh, sorry, we messed that up. Let's play that back and actually restart it how we should have started it. Yeah, absolutely. So then from here, in what was a weirdly built match just over oh. social media, but I'm excited for Blackpool Combat Club, which is Claudio, Ryan Danielson, and Mox taking on the team of Mark Briscoe and FTR. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy, this match is going to slap. <laughs> like, you can never go wrong with the Briscoe and FTR, and of course, Claudio, Danielson, and Mox is going to be great. I think just because they've been playing that this is going to honor Jay Briscoe, you can't have Mark lose this one. I'm giving it no. to Briscoe FT and FTR to win this one. 100% agree. Uh, this being an honor of uh, Jay, it's there's FTR and uh, Mark are going to win this. And I feel like because of the honor that everyone's paying at the end, we get a six-way handshake at the end of this thing. Everyone, I'm going like, to cry, probably. Yeah, That's how the yeah. Frisco FDR trilogy was, too. They kept the crap out of each other, and then they hugged. So excited. Now let's get into our championship matches. In the only non-Ring of Honor championship match, and Lord have mercy, I'm still excited. Because okay. me and Andrew are very familiar with both individuals involved in this match. For the Triple A championship you have the challenger black taurus or taurus how you know what they say it in multiple taurus. different ways taurus. so black taurus taking on the triple a champion el hijo del vikingo foregone conclusion vikingo is keeping that championship but i'm excited to see what flippy dippy things both of them are going to do and yeah. yes this is my match to watch if i'm being honest outside of our main event <laughs> Oh yeah, this match could be this. This should be in the middle somewhere, you know, maybe early middle. But this is going to be a high energy match. I don't see him losing his title soon anyway. But this will be a fire match. Definitely one of the ones to uh, challenge for a match of the night. And I kind of like that it's there because we've seen Vikingo pretty recently on Ring of Honor. So it's kind of like the other place for AAA and CMLL to uh, put their titles up. I'm excited. And we'll be talking more about the Kingo and me and Andrew review Impact. I'm so excited. 
we'll, I'll, we'll tell John after. So now let's get into our Ring of Honor Championships. The one I want to start with first is for the Ring of Honor six-man tag. We have Mogul Embassy taking on, um, my mind is blown, taking on TMDK, the mighty dope. Yeah. I am so ready for this match. Listen, TMDK is so amazing. They're just dominating right now between them and then we just saw their leader, Zack Sabre Jr. Mm -hmm. Like in Impact last week uh, at the pay-per-view, Lord have mercy. Mogul Embassy is retaining, but I think TMDK is going to give the boys of Mogul Embassy a run for their money. <laughs> I'm so yeah, we excited. got to see uh, TMDK not that long ago. Different, different triple set that they uh, got going mm -hmm. on in this. But I think this is a great way to kind of make up for some of the titles that haven't had big contenders build up. You bring in these outside teams that are legit contenders, but you know they're not going to walk away with the titles. But these two teams should blow the house up. Like, I mean, it's just blow the roof off the house. It's it, it's going to be an awesome match, and the way that uh, Mobile Embassy is going to throw these guys around is going to be insane. <laughs> it's going to be beautiful. I can't wait for it. So next up for the Pure, which I'm finally, I'm like, thank God, the Pure Championship is being defended, and this one's going to be a slobber knocker, as the kids say. Wheeler Yuta is defending this title against filthy Tom Lawler, and I'm just like, yes. Yep. this. I'm just finally happy to see Tom Lawler again because we were supposed to get that match between him and Adam Cole mm -hmm. at Forbidden Door, but Cole got sick. So now I'm just happy to see, oh my goodness, Wheeler's retaining this title, but man, yep. Tom Lawler is going to knock the stuffing out of Wheeler, and Wheeler's going to have to dig deep if he wants to win this match, because Tom Lawler don't play. As someone who watched Tom Lawler in MMA back when he fought in MMA, I think this is such a great call, again, to just like the six-man tag matches, you bring in someone from the outside who uh, makes sense as far as being a challenger to that title, but didn't need the same kind of build up that if you're gonna build stories within your promotion, because like you said, Tom Lawler could just beat the trash out of Wheeler Yuta. And Yuta though, oh, I Tom think- Tom Lawler? That's the same Tom Lawler. Yeah, oh my yeah God. Tom mm -hmm. Lawler. Watch the pay-per-view, even if you don't review it, John, just watch it, it's gonna yeah. be a fun one. But yeah, Yuta's gonna win this, and if they play it right, this could be the big jumping point for Yuta's um, title reign. I think you let him run this out for at least a few months before he loses it to someone like Josh Woods or someone. But or I think this is when Shibata comes back too. Yeah. 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 You know, I think there's a lot of angles you can run there, but this is a good match to say Wheeler Yuta defended at final battle against a legit threat like Tom Lawler. Uh, and he came out with the victory. However, he manages to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of matches that are going to rule, the Ring of Honor champion in the Survival of the Fittest match, we have six participants, five that are known, and one that we will find out when we watch the pay-per-view. But it is Dalton Castle versus Lee Moriarty versus Lee Johnson versus Kyle Fletcher versus Comander, and a mystery participant. I don't care who the mystery participant is because this match already is on paper. It's going to slap. I have to go with my heart. I'm like, I need to see Dalton win this thing. Yep. It's either Dalton or the mystery one, but I'm leaning towards Dalton to win. Get this man a title. I, I agree. I think the final two are going to be Dalton Castle and the mystery person. The only way the mystery person is winning is if it's a mystery big signing or returning competitor to Ring of Honor who they're going to put the title on to make the figurehead. If it's someone that shows up and we know they're here for just this match, it's guaranteed Dalton Castle's winning it. Uh, since I don't know who that mystery person is, Dalton Castle's my pick. He should be the one to win this. Dalton Castle is the only, one of the only other people that's been on TV as much as Athena has. He's one of those people, just like many of the tag teams, that have been holding down Ring of Honor and been loyal to Ring of Honor to hold up this promotion. You need to put a title on him. He deserves it, and he can be one of your front runners, one of your main faces of your promotion, just like Athena, just like I think the Righteous could be. Put the title on Dalton Castle, and let's let's get this division back in Ring of Honor. Absolutely, I'm really really excited for this. If this is going to be a lot of fun, but. Ladies and gentlemen and non-binary oh. folks out there, you already know why we're all really here for Final Battle. In your main event, 
for the Ring of Honor Women's Championship, Athena versus Billy Stark. A year storyline coming to a conclusion here. Listen, I love Athena so much. She has carried 2023. She was my, she is my women's wrestler of 2023. And with that being said, I'm going to be picking Billy Starks for this one. I think Billy is ready. And I think for 2024, I think Billy Starks is the perfect person to kick off a new era for the women's division in Ring of Honor since Athena has carried it through 2023. I have to go with Billy Starks on this one. This match is going to rule. 100% agree. I, I too think Billy Starks is going to win. I feel like the way they've built this up, this is Billy's chance to take it for her first title run. Even if it's not going to be her longest one, this is, this is her chance. The fact that she has a chance to pick this up now as young as she is, she's done such hard work. You know, as much as we talk about Athena carrying the division and carrying the promotion, Billy's been right there, right there holding it up with her. I'm interested to see what's going to happen with Lexi because we all feel like she's going to get involved somehow. But yeah, I think Billy wins this. If for no other reason, I think Billy takes the title holds it for a while while Athena gets a much deserved vacation and then gets to come back and you know be the foil against Billy going after that title and there's some phenomenal phenomenal uh, competitors that she'll get to defend that title against but yeah this this could also easily be match of the night and these two ladies earn that main event spot 100%. And that is going to be it for our predictions of Final Battle. Man, this was a long review, but honestly, you know, the boss fans of our, the bro are not here. So me, Andrew, and our special guest, John, get to play around a little bit. This was a lot of fun. So that is going to br bring us to the end of this bro. John, it was lovely to have you crash our review. It was so much fun. I love introducing I, I, more people. I might to interject at some point. You, you, it's a nice little cult you have here. I might check it out a little more often. Yes, join the cult that's his Ring of Honor. And if you want to join other fun cults on the internet, make sure to subscribe to the Biconics YouTube Wrestling Podcast channel, where you can get more cultish stuff from all the TV and paper reviews that we do here. Make sure I see to follow what you did there. Uh, yes. I see you. Mm. Did you see that segue? It was great. Speaking of other things that are great, if you want to follow us on social media, you can find us at BC WrestlePod, where we have great out of context clips as well as notifications of when these reviews go live and if you think this was unhinged we're we're kind of aew pay -per -view. <laughs> but if you want to see us be a little more unhinged go check us out at the actual biconics wrestling podcast where we talk a lot of smack and we're we say more off the cuff stuff than iron savages do at the beginning of their matches <laughs> like honestly you can find those wherever po your favorite podcasts can be found but Are you full? I doubt it. I'm a I'm bottomless. You could eat me all night.